Hi, this is Susan Brown. You know, every year I attend an annual meeting, the major annual meeting in the United States of bone health researchers. It's called the American Society of, for Bone and Mineral Research. Well, at these meetings, there are scientists from all over the world, about 4,000 of them, that come to talk about their research. Now, granted, most of these researchers are looking for ways looking for understanding mechanisms of how bone works so that they can actually develop new bone drugs. It's a highly scientific endeavor looking into smaller and smaller aspects of how bone work. But in my case, I go to look and see what do these researchers have to tell us that would be useful for us, for the people who want to build and maintain bone health. And every year I can eke out several dozen really interesting topics. So in the next few blogs, I'm going to be sharing these topics with you. Like one of them was a brand a new study on hopping. Hopping study done in Sweden showing that actually one-legged hopping builds bone mass, builds hip bone mass more than we had expected. There were studies on probiotics. I'm very fond of thinking about probiotics as bone building factors and now the researchers are saying the same things. We're going to be talking about that. There's a lot of studies on vitamin D. Particularly the one I liked the most was really pointed out the fact that you cannot predict vitamin D absorption. And so you may give 2,000, 3,000 units to 100 people, but you may get very different results and that everyone should really have their vitamin D tested individually. There was an interesting study on teenagers showing that about 50% or a large percentage of young children in Canada, young teenagers are taking birth control for menstrual disorders and that these children are jeopardizing the development of peak bone mass because of that. There was also interesting studies on many drug therapies, whether they be proton pump inhibitors, how they affect bone loss. There were some new studies on interactions between the immune system and the bone, and the fact that bone is very active. It plays a role in the immune system. It plays a role in the endocrine system. It's a very complicated organ, much has many more functions, and it produces many more hormones than we thought. Interesting studies on fracture incidence. For example, we see that in Canada now, while the hip fracture rate is declining as a whole, just like it is in the U.S., that the one area where it may be increasing is amongst very older people, people 90 to 100. So if you're going to be, if you're going to be really long-lived, pay special attention. You want to maintain your bone health program all of your life, all of your long life. And one final last interesting thing I learned was that in Canada also, when you come to like 75-year-olds to 85-year-olds, when they looked at that particular segment in their large camel study, they found that the hip fracture rate was the same for men and women of that age group. We always think women have more, but when you look at the data, men and women had the same rate of hip fractures. So I hope you find some of these topics interesting. I'll be talking to you about them over the next few weeks and letting you know what the bone health researchers are thinking about. Talk to you later.